Hello everyone, and welcome to a discussion of the force of static friction. So what you're seeing in front of you right now is a uh, demo that I did a couple of years ago. And basically what I did is I ran the friction apparatus like you did in the lab. And these three different trials were made. This one, the green one, had uh, basically a cart with a few extra masses in there to make it a, a, an even number. This one had twice as much mass which means twice as big of a force of gravity acting on it, which means twice the normal force. And this one had three times the mass, three times the force of gravity, three times the normal force. So this was the original one. This was twice the normal force. This was three times the normal force. Now, if you remember our discussion of why the graphs looked this way, this stuff over here where it's all zero, that's before it actually started pulling. The horizontal part here, is when it was moving and moving constantly. So this was the kinetic friction. And you can see here, notice the orange line is about twice the green one, and the red one is about three times the green one. Right? So they were nice and proportional. But this part right here, the spike, was the static friction. This was how much force it needed to overcome before it could get it going. Right? So the top of the spike was the maximum amount of static friction. Think about that again. So static friction went from zero, pulled, 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 till it got to the top. And then here, after it exceeded that, it broke free. And then it started to move constantly. Then it was kinetic friction. So there was the maximum amount of static friction when we had a certain normal force. And notice the value is up here. It's 0.68. For this one, this was when the normal force was twice as big. Remember, I used twice as much mass, so twice as much force of gravity. And look at the maximum value. Ah, and then in the red one, I had three times the mass, three times the normal force, and look at the value. Right? Now, these are kind of hard to control, which is why I'm doing this one for you instead of having you try to do it in lab. But look at this pattern. So when the normal force was doubled, the maximum static friction required to get it moving was doubled. When the normal force was tripled, the maximum static friction required to get it moving was tripled. So they changed the same way. And that means the graph would be a linear graph going through 0, 0. And so the maximum amount of static friction is proportional to normal force. Right, so look at that again. Maximum amount of static friction proportional to normal force. And I hope that you can accept this. Right, as a good result in a carefully done lab. It's really hard to get the data to be clean, so that's why I did this myself. Right. Okay. Now, the slope of this graph, as we saw in the original lab, is going to depend on the actual numerical value, is going to depend on the types of surfaces. And it's called the coefficient of static friction. This is the Greek letter mu, it's a lowercase mu, with an s as a subscript. This is different than the coefficient of kinetic friction. Kinetic friction has a different coefficient. Okay? This is the coefficient of static friction. It's the slope of a graph of maximum static friction versus normal force. It's the slope of this graph. But conceptually, it's a relative measure of how much static friction there is because of the types of surfaces. Surfaces that, have, that naturally have more static friction, rougher surfaces, if you will, will have steeper slopes, bigger coefficients. Surfaces which are smoother, don't take as much force to get something going, they'll have less steep graphs and lower slopes. Plug that in, and we get a math model for static friction. That static friction is mu s times the normal force. Now notice this little symbol, though. It says less than or equal to. Why? Well, go back to here. The static friction, let's look at the orange one. Static friction wasn't just one value. At this point, we were pulling, but it wasn't moving yet. So static friction had a range of values, anywhere from zero all the way up to a maximum. So that little less than or equal to is because static friction actually ranges from zero to a maximum. The maximum amount of static friction is mu s times the normal force, which means that in order to get something moving, you must exceed this force in order to get something moving. And then once it's moving, it'll move with the lower amount of kinetic friction. 
it's easier to keep something moving than to get it moving, right? So oftentimes they'll ask questions, and you'll see these on the worksheets that will follow. It'll say, how much force does it take to get something to begin to move? Or when will something get to move? And that's when static friction is a maximum, right? which is this equation. If static friction isn't a maximum, it just balances out right, the forces here, and it can be less than that value. But this is the maximum amount it can be. So I hope you now have a, at least a little bit of a grasp here of how static friction works.